G'day from Zandvoort in the Netherlands after the Dutch Grand Prix at the weekend. And the big story was Daniel Ricciardo out for at least a couple of races and Liam Lawson in. All the behind the scenes in just a moment. I wasn't at the scene of Daniel's crash, I was at the other end of the track, but I did see it on the TV monitors, and the first I knew of any drama was when I was waiting for the drivers to come to the driver's briefing, which is an hour and a half after the second session, and I photographed all of them, except Daniel, and I said to someone next to me, did you see Daniel Ricciardo? He said, no. Well, the reason we didn't see him was he was off at the medical centre, and I was doing my meet and greet here on Friday night at the front of the NH Hotel, and uh, somebody said, oh, Daniel's just been announced as going to hospital and broken his wrist. Oh, better put a post up. So what has to happen before Liam can drive in a race? Well, on the Saturday morning, he had to go to the FIA and do a jump out test where he has to prove that he can get out of the car. I think he gets seven seconds and a few more seconds to put the steering wheel back on. What about race suit, gloves, helmet, etc.? Well, there's a kit bag with all of his equipment in it. All he had to do was unzip that. What about his race seat? Well, he's already done a seat fitting. He just has to check that it's still okay. The team then has to change the livery on the car, which is pretty simple to do. Just takes a little bit of time. There's a new sign above the garage that needed to be installed. They had to drag out the Liam Lawson pit board. They had to settle on a trainer. That was an easy one. They simply used Piru. And Piru, over the last 10 months, has worked with four different drivers. And his name had to be put on his steering wheel box. And I happen to know that Liam is a real whiz when it comes to this steering wheel. These are very complicated pieces of equipment, but he had no trouble with that. There was huge interest back in his home country of New Zealand around this, and uh, headlines were being made in that country. A lot of interest from the media at the track, obviously, wanting to have a chat with him. So straight after the accident, Daniel's first call was to Lance Stroll to see who the doctor was that performed his wrist surgery earlier this year. Then it was a quick flight to Barcelona, and the operation took place on a Sunday. And now Daniel, as his fingers crossed, he'll be ready for, well, I don't think he'll be ready for the next race, but certainly he'll be aiming for Singapore or perhaps even Japan. One thing I was advised of was that a team can only use four drivers in a season. And Liam Lawson is the fourth. So if Liam doesn't work out and Daniel can't get back, would they go back to Nick DeVries? What would Nick say if they did? It's a long shot, I know. Jumping to Sunday and Liam was pretty happy with his performance ended up 16th in his first race, and he is the 775th driver to have started in an F1 race. Just one thing about Daniel before I finish on this bit, he came in on Friday morning with this um, suitcase, which he was wheeling along, and uh, I made some remark about it, and then he just wheeled it towards me, and it was very evident that it had nothing in it. And that uh, has happened before with Nick De Vries going back to, I'm pretty sure it was Spain, where he too walked in with the same case with nothing in it. That is for the sponsor. When I posted this picture, a number of you commented about George's new hairstyle. So I had a chat with him on Friday night at the end of the day and said, what's the story? He said, look, I've been running, put a headband on and uh, this is how it ended up. And he said, uh, I'm gonna give this a go for a while, see how it goes. And still on the subject of George, on the Saturday after Quali, he came back down to jump in one of those golf buggies to go to the media pen, and he approached from the driver's side where there was someone waiting to drive him, and he just said, move over, I'm driving. George came in on all four days wearing Tommy Hilfiger, and I met the guy that styled him, this is Randy. He will be in my Men of the Paddock post on Tuesday. And on the subject of fashion, what was Joe wearing? This, Lewis, these four outfits. And I did watch Lewis spend a good 10 seconds making sure that the leg was tied up at the right height on this outfit. And he's wearing one glove. Somebody said that looks like a one pound glove you get from a hardware store. I didn't ask him what that was about. Perhaps I should have asked Randy because this is a Tommy Hilfiger outfit. Now, typically Lance Stroll doesn't get a huge response on my page, but this picture and story went to crazy. I showed this picture in the back of the camera to one of his team just after I took it and said, what's this about? And they said, after some delay, I don't see anything. Obviously, mum was the word with that, but I understand it was just a, a routine piece of surgery, and I'll be interested to see what the scar looks like this week in Monza. But Lance was definitely in a good mood that weekend. I got this lovely picture of him connecting with my camera, which I don't often get. But the atmosphere in the paddock on Saturday night was just lovely. Lots of drivers in very good moods. Pierre Gasly coming back had these Stroop waffles, a local delicacy. I asked him what he's gonna do with them and his press officer, James Lloyd, made a crude remark, uh, which uh, Pierre laughed at and then probably got him in a headlock. Nico Hulkenberg having some fun behind Kevin's head. And Norris came zipping past me while I was looking at pictures in the back of my camera and not paying attention, and very close to the back of my head just says, 
you missed me. And then there's this picture, which was, I think, my biggest post of the Saturday. Who is this? This is Mick Schumacher's girlfriend, Layla, a model from Denmark. This weekend, though, was really all about Max. He was the hometown hero. Of course, he won his ninth straight race. Great celebrations out on the uh, track after the race. Plenty of flares going off from the crew. My God, those things stink. But Max was surrounded by security the whole weekend. The same security guys that were with him last year. If you got an autograph or a selfie from Max this weekend, you had certainly earned it. On Thursday, I did a signed print collaboration with Oscar Piastri. He signed 50 of these prints. They're almost sold out uh, at the moment. But he did mention that when he went to F2, he shortened his signature. And then when he went to F1, he shortened it even more because they just don't have the time to spend signing an autograph, say like a, a Jackie Stewart autograph, which takes exactly 9.4 seconds to do. The rain was once again with us. I don't think we've had a rain-free event since Spain. Well, was Lewis holding his own umbrella? No, but we're not gonna go into that again because we've already given that much air time a few weeks ago. On the side of the McLaren car, did you see this love logo? If you look very closely inside that logo, which I have done for you, you can see that there are a whole lot of fan names on that piece of artwork. I should say that this is a very tough track to get around because you're not walking on concrete a lot of the times, you're walking in sand. And over the weekend I did 71 kilometers, well weekend, it was over five days. A lot of walking and much of it in cold weather. But the Dutch fans didn't mind at all. Rain or shine, they were loving it. And I always think that the Dutch race is a little bit like a, a daytime club where you've got thumping dance music playing and then all of these sing-along songs, uh, local favorites. But to my mind, this is the best atmosphere of any race. Well done, New Dutch. Celebrities at the track, well, not a huge number, but I can tell you I saw Steve Carell, Andre Ryu, Tiny Temper, well, we had a king and queen with us, of course, Matt and Tommy from P1, and Anthony Joshua, well-known British boxer, who was there on the Thursday and made these girls swoon. Carlos had a young lady in tears. He stopped to sign an autograph for this young girl and uh, she was most appreciative of the gesture. Did you see the livery on the Alfa Romeo car and in the garage? I did, it looked like this. And this is the artist that did that work. And this is the hat from the weekend. Now for something completely different, this is what the fireworks look like. They are strapped to the poles that run all the way down the main straight and they are fired off by this particular device, which is radio controlled. Question for you, which driver's dad was wearing non-matching shoes? Apparently you buy them like this with different colors. You'll have to see my shoes of the paddock post on Instagram for the answer there. And which driver had a scratch on his car that wasn't there, I believe, when he picked up the car? For the answer to that, you'll have to look at my Drivers Drove video on Wednesday. So despite the rain, the wind, the cold weather, the trudging through the sand, I did love this race. It is a really great buzz to be at this track and uh, even with the crazy crowd control measures that they implement out in the streets and they've got riot barriers like this all over the town, it's a great place to be. So where to next? Well, we're off to Monza, where the Tifosi are equally as passionate as the Dutch fans, and where they'll be filming more of the Apex movie. And they'll be doing something interesting for that movie at that track. I do hope I'm there to witness it. Otherwise, we'll just have to wait for the movie to come out. Having entertained you for a number of minutes, I'll trust that you now hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and for all my digital images, go to ProStarPix.com. For signed driver's prints, F1 photo books, wall art, and merchandise, kimelman.com. And for my best images live from the track and during the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Elman. Thanks to Williams for this lovely hat, and thanks for watching. And stay passionate. Nailed it.